The year is 2009. The housing market has completely collapsed. Unemployment is at a record high, and Bin Laden is still at large. It is truly a dark time for this nation. Now you might ask yourself, what was I, microwave oven, doing during this time to make the world a better place? To that I say, absolutely nothing because this was the year that pokemon heart gold and soul silver were released baby arguably the greatest entries in the highest grossing video game franchise of all time you think that i an 11 year old kid gives a shit about the future hell no i'm living for today and today i'm gonna be doing a hardcore nuzlocke of pokemon soul silver with randomized encounters so go grab a snack Get comfortable and strap in because it's going to be a wild ride. The run begins in a dark room. Ellipses, ellipses, a man appears. I name myself Oven and head next door to get my starter. My options are Shinx, Starly, and Gibble. The clear choice here is Gibble, as it gets the move Dragon Rage at level 7, which is, frankly, criminal. Twitch chat decides that my naming theme is going to be Type of Mollusk, and Gibble is named Razor Clam. I momentarily become and head to the home of a man named Mr. Pokemon. He gives me an egg, and Professor Oak gives me the Pokedex. I run back to the lab, only to get assaulted in my path by a red-haired boy who I proceed to snitch on. I'm asked for his name by the cop, and I tell him Dilla. And sorry, I got so hyper-focused on the year 2009 that I totally forgot to give you the rules for the challenge. So here they are. If a Pokemon faints in battle, they must be released. I can only catch the first encounter on every route. I am not allowed to use items in battle. I'm not allowed to overlevel the gym leader's ace, and I must play in set mode. Now that we have that out of the way, let's get to some encounters. My first encounter is a Smeargle that outspeeds me, fails to sketch, and then struggles itself to death. Classic. I then head north to Route 46, where I encounter a Talo that I accidentally run from. In, in my defense, the bag button is very close to the run button. It's, it's, it's very close. We're, we're moving on. I finally capture my first team member, a Poochiena, on Route 30. I name him Clam. After this, I proceed to Route 31 for my next encounter, a Feebass that I name Cuddle. And uh, all right, I don't have time for this. I'm going to speed run the rest of my encounters up to Faulkner uh, because they're really not that important. I got a Hoot Hoot named Scallop in Dark Cave, Nidoran Female in Sprout Tower named Kohog, Cockle the Spiro from Route 32, and Jingle the Flaffy from the Ruins of Alf. With that, it's time for my first gym battle. I Dragon Rage twice, and then the Zephyr Badge is mine. That's it. That's, that's really, it's the whole fight. I, I might have to institute a no Dragon Rage rule in my future runs, but not today. I take the victory and move on. I pick up the egg from Elm's assistant and make my way to Union Cave where I find a Slugma. You know Slugma. You, you know Slugma. Slugma b Her name is Nautilie. By the way, I don't actually know any mollusks beyond the commonly known ones like clams, scallops, mussels. So I had the Britannica page for types of mollusks pulled up the whole run. If it sounds like I don't know what I'm saying, it's because I don't know what I'm saying. I grab the fishing rod from the guy in the Pokemon Center here and fish up a Kakuna that I crit so he never gets a mollusk name, rest in peace. I also fish up Octopus, the Nuzleaf in Cherry Grove, and Squid the Lotad in Newbark Town. With all the backlogged encounters caught or killed, I head to Azalea Town where my mystery egg finally hatches into a Flareon, which is super nice for this upcoming bug gym. But before we do that, we have to take care of some filth in the sewers, and by that I mean Team Rocket in the Slowpoke Well. Tusk the Flareon is able to extrasensory its way all the way through the grunts and their leader, we experience Void again, and catch our remaining encounters before Bugsy, Bubble the Silcoon, All of the Wingle, and Limpet the Merrill are all sent directly to the box. Shout out to my friend Jordan's cat that's named Bugsy, actually, and, and 
Let me sincerely apologize for what I'm about to do, and I hope you find it in your heart to forgive me. Tusk burns the whole building down for an incredibly easy hive badge. RIP to all the bugs in that gym. I'm sorry, Bugsy. On my way out of the town, Dilla confronts me about my recent arson, and Tusk isn't done yet. His entire team is decimated, and then we head to Goldenrod. We get quite a few encounters prior to Whitney, so I'll do another speedrun. Route 34 gives us Helmut the Magnemite, who immediately dies at the hands of a Cubone in the National Park, which conveniently is where we find Periwinkle the Iggly buff, straight to the box. On Route 35, I try headbutting trees for like five minutes, but the game refuses to give me anything, so instead I find Piddick the Duskull in the grass. To the east of the park, we get a Riolu on Route 36. His name is Oyster. And with that, it is time for Whitney, the first run killer of the game. I take Clefairy out with a couple of Dragon Rages, and in comes the beast. I get one Dragon Rage off before having to switch out due to the big damage from Stomp. I switch in Duskull for the normal immunity and realize way too late that Miltank's scrappy ability allows her to land normal type attacks on ghost type Pokemon. I am in danger. Nuzleaf comes in for Duskull while the cow starts rollout. I nature power once and do pitiful damage. And after a flinch from Stomp, I pull in Spiro for a sacrifice and a clean switch. Flareon comes in, breaks through the attraction, and finishes off the fight for a risky win. Yikes. But a win is a win, and still no huge losses yet. Let's head north. We have an obstacle in our way headed to Ecritique. A tree, it seems. I take my squirt bottle out and water it to see if it'll move, and... Out of nowhere, the thing balloons up and then tries to lick me. Luckily, Razor Clam is there to defuse the situation, but dang, that could have gotten out of hand. Before we actually get to Ecritique, we encounter a new mollusk in Kakwina the Cradley. Then we fish up Anshura the Metapod in the city, fish for Laxnima the Barboach on Route 42, find Chitin the Zubat in Mount Mordor, Bisnuchni the Rattata in Burned Tower, and then a bronze ore that I name Euphemite to the west of Ecritik. With everything caught for the most part, I can take out Dilla again with an extra sensory, an ember, another extra sensory, and then another two embers. He runs away crying and the legendary dogs run after him. The only notable thing that happens prior to our fight with Morty is the death of Cradley to one of his gym trainers, but honestly, who cares? Let's get the fourth gym badge. Tusk takes out his first Ghastly with an extra sensory after getting cursed. He immediately brings out his ace, Gengar, who mean looks, trapping Flareon in the battle, meaning that Tusk is pretty much as good as dead. I take out the Gengar, but end up dying to curse. I send out Crobat, who bites his way through his last two Pokemon, and that earns us the Fog Badge. It's unfortunate that we lost Flareon, but we got bigger fish to fry. There's a Team Rocket Grunt who's stormed the stage down at the Ecritic Dance Theater and begun the world's longest pirouette. I attempt to steal this record from him, but I just can't spend that long. So I take out my frustration on him by biting his coughing twice. As a reward, we receive the HM for Surf and start our journey to Olivine. On our way there, I encounter the Roaming Raikou, which honestly terrified me because of how high leveled it was. I just immediately run away. I also grab Nukulana the Squirtle as our Route 39 encounter, which is pretty good. In Olivine, we surf for Shipworm the Clam Pearl and also get Zebra the Ghastly on Route 40. A quick little surf past the Whirlpool Islands and we land in Seanwood where I can fish up a Magikarp that I name Arkshell. Now it's pretty much time for Chuck. So I make sure all my Pokemon are at the level cap. I end his shower and challenge him for the fifth gym badge. I lead with Scallop the Noctowl and break through his double team three times for a KO on Primeape. Chuck brings in his Polyrath who flinches to the first air slash and then a second one takes him out. This could have gone very differently had Noctowl missed due to the evasion boost, but it all works out. I decide to see what's going on with this Suicune up here. It does a little dance and then runs away. This makes Yusween jealous, so he challenges me to a fight and gets obliterated. 
Next thing on the agenda is to scale the lighthouse in Olivine to deliver the light in the house some medicine so that it can light the house. After this good deed, Jasmine is available for a battle, so we knock her out with a couple of force palms from Lucario, followed by two surfs from Wishcash. I do a little backtracking for encounters by the Safari Zone, which is now accessible. My encounter on Route 48 is a skitty, but this makes me so mad that I just kill it on the spot. I, I'm actually so annoyed by this that I forget to even do my Route 47 encounter. Like, I just saw Skitty and didn't want anything to do with this area, so I left. Anyway, I heard some rumblings about a red Gyarados in the Lake of Rage, so I wanted to see what that was all about. Uh, I head north of Mahogany Town, where I can get my Route 43 encounter, a Fion that I unfortunately don't have enough balls to capture. So after going back to get some Ultra Balls, I head to the Gyarados to see what it randomizes into. A Quagsire. Cool. It keeps the shiny form, too. This is actually a really cool feature about this randomizer. Anyway, after this, I can follow Lance to the Team Rocket HQ. He uses his Dragonite as a weapon, and then I have to fight literally the same exact battle with Rocket Grunts like 10 times. I do get an encounter down here on these little pad things that spawn Pokemon. I think they're usually like electrodes or something but it randomizes into a Tyranitar, which is a great addition to the team. I name her Murex and then head deeper into Rocket HQ. The boss fight here is Petrol and I lead Gyarados into his Zubat. I take out his team with an Ice Fang and two Surfs. We've still got to shut down the machine they've got running down here, but en route we're stopped by Ariana and some Grunt. This is a pretty easy win because Lance has a level 40 Dragonite that just carries the fight. Afterwards, we still have to shut down this machine, and there are three electrodes I have to beat. They randomize into a Cleffa, a Feebas, and then a Combuskin, which would have been a really cool encounter, but oh well, it's price time now. I lead Ampharos into his seal, take it out with a quick discharge, and then pivot into Arc Shell to surf the Pylo Swine a couple times. I get a little low here, so I switch into Ampharos for absolutely no reason while he heals. I realize my mistake, and then I send in Quagsire, who is immediately killed with a critical hit blizzard. Really unlucky. Murex comes in and can rock slide and payback for the kill, and his last Pokemon is Dugong, who I take out with a discharge from Jingle and two force palms from Oyster. It's a little annoying we lost Quagsire here, but ultimately it's just pink Wishcash. After this, I have to finish up the last of the very mediocre story in this game back in Goldenrod City. While I'm here, I remember that I still need a Goldenrod encounter in the form of a gift Pokemon from Bill. It ends up being a Roserade, which is pretty cool. I then head into the Radio Tower where I lose Gyarados to a wheezing explosion in the fight with Petrol. What an absolute classic. We also have a rival fight that I did not prepare for. I send in Jingle, who takes out his lead with a single discharge, Chitin makes light work of Meganium, and then I pull in Lucario to fight the Magnemite. I get paralyzed, confused, and then when I try to switch, I am unable because of the ability Magnet Pool. Oyster is a super unfortunate loss here, he was definitely going to make the Elite Four team, but I'm able to finish up the fight with Tyranitar. This whole section of the game is just a boss rush, so after getting the card key from the director in the basement, our next fight is Proton, who goes down very easily with the help of Jingle, who's kind of been the MVP of this run so far. Hopefully nothing bad happens to her. Ariana is next. I lead Murex into their Arbok, who goes down to a couple rock slides. I pivot to Crobat on the Vileplume, who faints after a couple of plucks. Her last Pokemon is Murkrow, who just gets jingled. The last fight of this gauntlet is with the great value rocket leader himself, Archer. It is just a very easy fight. Blastoise sweeps with a few surfs. It is now time to head east toward Blackthorn, and on our way we have a few shots at new encounters. The first is Ear, the drowsy who I catch on Route 44. I then encounter a Houndour, an ice path that just roars me away, which makes like five or six failed encounters now. Cool. We complete the most unnecessarily tedious puzzle in the game, and then pick up our final encounter, Stunky, on Route 45. 
I do forget that I have a fishing encounter in Blackthorn here, but who cares? It's time to fight Claire. She's pretty tough, as I don't really have an answer to dragon types yet, but I lead Jingle to take out the Gyarados with a single discharge. I then switch to Blastoise and recover from paralysis with a Cherry Berry. She of course uses Thunder Wave again, but I'm able to take care of both this Dragonair and the next one with Avalanches. In comes her ace, Kingdra. I decide to just sacrifice Blastoise for a clean switch into Ampharos. I really thought I could kill from this range with discharges, but I end up having to sacrifice Jingle as well. In comes Crobat, who gets Kingdra very close to dying, but she retaliates with a ridiculously lucky sniper boosted crit hyper beam. This is so annoying because if she didn't even have the ability sniper on Kingdra, the crit wouldn't have killed. Oh well, I bring Razor Clam in to clean it up, and we are now at 10 deaths for the run with 8 badges. All that's left is our encounter with Lugia and then the Elite Four. Before we fight Lugia, we have one encounter in the Dragon Den, a Beldum, which is huge. I catch it and name it Slipper. I have to take on the gauntlet of Kimono Girls in Ecritique, but I get out with no deaths and then make a quick trip to Newbark Town for the Master Ball. Now, it is time to encounter Lugia. The whole way through the World Islands I repel so that my encounter can be the Lugia at the end of the path. I present the Silver Wing to the guy guarding the entrance, watch the Kimono Girls do their little dance, and step up. Surely, this will be the best encounter of the run. On the level of a legendary Pokemon, a true beast. I initiate the fight, and it's... It's... A skip loom. Of course, tradition dictates that I have to catch the legendary in the Master Ball, so that I do, and it is officially time for the Elite Four. I head back to Newbark Town and surf into the Kanto region. Here I can pick up the last encounters of the run. A Torchic on Route 27, I name him Geoduck. In Tojo Falls, I encounter a Sunflora that I name Turpod with a silent P. On Route 26, I find Conch the Rhyhorn, and then my final encounter of the run is a Furret that I catch on Victory Road. I cannot believe the game furreted me for my final encounter. I do have one last fight with Dilla, so I make some preparations ahead of that fight. In the randomizer I'm using, I modified the game so that trade evolutions and Pokemon like Feebas just evolve by level up. So I evolve Ghastly up to a Gengar and add Feebas, which evolves into Milotic to my party. I also get the TMs from the guy at the game corner for Thunderbolt and Ice Beam. I make my way through Victory Road and Dilla stops me one last time as I'm exiting the cave. He sends out his Sneasel to face my Blaziken and it goes down to one double kick. I pivot to Tyranitar for the Kadabra, and one Crunch takes it out. Then I switch back into Blaziken for a Blaze Kick on Meganium. It does a surprisingly high amount of damage to me, so I swap out Geoduck for Slipper, who can tank Petal Dances. I use Psychic for the kill, and then another Psychic also kills Haunter. Dilla sends in Golbat, and two Water Pulses from Milotic knocks it out. He's down to his last Pokemon, Magneton, who falls to two Rock Slides. Now it's time for the final five fights of the game. I make my last preparations and head into the Pokemon League with a team of Zebra, the Gengar, Cuddle, the Milotic, Slipper, the Metagross, Razor Clam, the Gabite, Murex, the Tyranitar, and Geoduck, the Blaziken. I lead Gengar holding the Choice Scarf into Wheel Zatu and take it out with a single Shadow Ball. I made sure to put the experience share on Gabite before this fight so both Zebra and Razor Clam level up after this first kill. Gengar then takes out Jinx with a Shadow Ball. And you know, there's no point in me dragging this out, Zebra takes out the whole team with one hit KO Shadow Balls. Gabite evolves into Garchomp after the win and then we head into Koga's room. His first Pokemon out is Ariados which goes down to a single critical hit Blaze Kick. He sends in Crobat and I switch into Milotic to try to kill with an Ice Beam. He double teams and I proceed to miss two Ice Beams before finally hitting the third. That could have been really bad. In comes Fortress, so I pivot back to Geoduck. 
He sets up toxic spikes and Blaziken kills the fortress and the Venomoth with super effective blaze kicks. In comes Muck, who immediately sets up Minimize, making Blaziken miss everything. I switch in Slipper for the poison immunity and to negate the entry hazard, and a single Psychic takes out the second member of the Elite Four. I switch the Choice Scarf onto Metagross, and similar to the Will fight, I press Psychic four times for four kills. Then his Machamp comes in, who tanks a Psychic and then retaliates with a crit cross chop. I barely hang on and finish the fight with one Psychic. That's three members down. Now, for the fight with Karen, I do something so stupid. I lead Gengar into her Umbreon, thinking that Ghost is super effective against Dark types. I had it backwards. I immediately have to switch into Blaziken, and after missing a few double kicks and getting confused, I switch to Garchomp, who lands one Dragon Claw before getting confused as well, forcing me to switch back into Blaziken, who finally lands the final blow with a double kick for the kill. Yikes. In comes Murkrow, so I switch to Tyranitar for an easy knockout with Rock Slide. I pull in Metagross for a Psychic on the Vileplume, and then switch back to Murex for an Earthquake on Houndoom. I didn't look up movesets prior to this fight, so when I saw Gengar use a four times super duper effective focus blast on Tyranitar, my heart dropped. I hang on with 14 HP and fire back with a super effective crunch for the win. Now for my fight with Lance to become the Pokemon champion. I switch the choice scarf to Milotic and lead Gengar into his Gyarados. One Thunderbolt does the job, and he sends out Aerodactyl, who outspeeds with a hard-hitting crunch, leaving me at 9 HP. I hit back with a Thunderbolt, and that leaves him with even less health. I poorly predict a Sucker Punch here while he decides to heal, and unfortunately have to sacrifice Zebra for a clean switch into Milotic. Choice Scarf allows me to outspeed, but I don't do quite enough with Ice Beam. He fires back with a Thunder Fang, which scares me, but Cuddle is too beefy. I use Ice Beam four more times to take out Aerodactyl, and Lance's three Dragonite. Who needs three Dragonite? His final Pokemon is Charizard, and for whatever reason, I decide to stay in with Milotic, not realizing that Ice Beam is out of PP. So I use Struggle in a champion battle. I use Struggle in a champion battle. It's okay though, Air Slash doesn't kill, so I can switch to the tank, Murex the Tyranitar, and with a single rock slide, I claim the title of Pokemon Champion. Thanks for watching, guys. This is a super fun run. I uh, always love randomizers. I know I'm not 100% done with the game, so if you wanna see the back half with the Kanto region and the fight with Red, drop a comment. Maybe I'll be persuaded. Let me know what challenges you want me to do next, and uh, do me a favor by dropping a like, subscribing, commenting below. Maybe tell me what your favorite mollusk is. Uh, all right, well, I, I guess that's it. See ya.